Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel of Mookie Nevermore. So far, the story has been, uh, the story has been pretty uh, intense here. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. Let's run! Run, run, run! So far, you know the man who's having the dreams happen. Or ha is having this dream is remembering his childhood mostly and teenage years. At least from what we saw in the last episode. And he was a kid who was acting out due to his father, quote unquote father, <laughs> quote unquote neglecting him, even though. He's more busy with his line of work to keep his kid happy and stuff. And of course, since he felt neglected in a sense, he was acting out in his teen years. At least, that's what I picked up. That's how I interpret it. If you want to know the story for yourself, you can feel free to go back on these videos and look at it yourself. Hmm. Wait, what? Oh, what's his name? Even at my most distant the times when I detested him the most. He kept reaching out. For a year straight, he asked me every week when we were going camping. I thought he was just dense. Eventually, to shut him up, I agreed. We carried out the worn lawn chairs from the garage and set up a cinder block campfire at the site we'd always used behind the house. We walked down the mountain path Talking in the warm sunshine, we only got a couple months of the year. Those three obsidian rocks shimmered alongside the shore, almost like sparklers pressed against a dark window. I'll never forget that wet stone on my feet, or how those massive mountains looked even bigger in the lake's reflection. I felt small, but grateful. As the sun set, my dad found something I hadn't seen for a long time. The tree where I'd made my first carving when I was six. I hadn't even carved it. My dad had helped me, but I still called it my tree. Something about seeing my name there made me open up, and we talked about everything that night in that old camouflage tent. I told him how much I loved sketching and design, and how it would be a dream to study architecture in Seattle. I told him how I didn't get along with my friends much anymore, but that I didn't mind being alone. He told me he was there for me, and he joked that if all he had to do was write my name on a tree to finally get me to talk, he would have left me carved logs with novels on them in front of my room every morning. <laughs> I don't know why it took me that long to realize it, but it was then I knew how much he had sacrificed for me. there were old abandoned pieces of a shed and car long left unused. I used to ask him all the time who those people were that left all this junk, and I'm sure he got so tired of hearing it that he made up some elaborate stories how a brown bear ate them and haunted the woods afterwards. What's funny is I think it made those people seem more real, growing up thinking they were still hanging out like they couldn't say goodbye. 
I used to tell my friends how I could swear I saw spirits move near the water, and that always freaked them out. I guess it didn't bother me, because the way I saw it, they were normal people with old cars and sheds, just trying to figure out how to survive and be happy in the middle of nowhere. It was a cool thought that they didn't want to leave, but you know, I was a weird kid. Well, you had good company since those ghosts like living in a place where they were brutally devoured. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Game, why you gotta make me cry, man? That's not cool. Mm, stories are so nice. Ah, oh, this is the tent he was talking about earlier. I jump. Wee. So, how do I deal with this rock? So tombstone. For what though? My dad built a lot of stuff in his free time. If he wasn't watching fly fishing or reading Tom Clancy novels, he was carving something. He made tons of birdhouses. Not that he was into bird watching, but I think he really missed working and adding on to the home. If he couldn't afford the time to build onto our own house, he would have to settle with watching birds move into their little homes. We kept an old mattress in the bed of that ugly yellow truck. So we would drive it deep into the woods and then watch the birds fly into their houses while the sun set. Usually it was accompanied by venison jerky or a cold coke, but not a lot of talking, which is how we both liked it. So they kind of got along then, which is good that they got along. Hopefully more than just kind of. There's a thing.
customs. Is that? Oh, it's a tree. We were happiest underneath the evergreens. We decided it was time to finally map out the hundreds of acres we lived on just to pass the time during the summer. He was only free in the evenings, so I would spend the day wasting time on dial up internet and sketching, and then we would rush into the woods pen and map in hand before evening fell. Sometimes, the aurora borealis would cast a cold green glow on the mountainside, and we would finish our route underneath a twilight sky. Sometimes, I was lonely during those summer days, but there was comfort in the routine. A lot of teenagers aren't looking for the daily grind, though. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get out, to leave your childhood home. You wanted to progress, to make something of yourself. Yeah, you're right. That house. I'm sure it's the same as how I left it. But then why does it feel so different? I doubt you're the only adult to have looked back and asked that question. Press one, I want to jump, but it doesn't want to work. <laughs> originally just spamming it. me think about Dreamscaper. I didn't really get that far in that game either. <laughs> I wonder if 
there's a way I could go back and uh, re look into it. I probably easily could. was wrong. My dad is uh, dead. My dad is dead. And he's never coming back, Rachel. I can tell you these stories, but I can never reminisce with him again. He can never hold a grandchild that we'll probably never be able to have. I can never talk to him again, and I'll never be able to say I'm sorry. For everything. Oh. Hello, Wolf. I had a feeling that's why he was. <gasps> oh! Did you kill my child? No. I'll murder you, Mr. Wolf! How dare you kill my children! Come back here, mister. I'll bite your ankles off. Like no sense thing to tell you, like, hey, 
Congratulations, you're getting closer to your pup. And again, since they're probably so far away from her originally, for her to find them, when she gets close, it's just... This game, it's beautiful, just why? Why are they dead? I mean, sure, he's experiencing loss and stuff. is lost. Oh. I need to go to bed. I just can't talk about this anymore. Good night. Good night. No. Oh. Look for her for frick's sakes. Why are you gotta make me cry like this? And with that being said, thank you everyone so much for watching this video. I appreciate you all. There will be more videos of this, the first three, <laughs> pretty soon. See you guys until then. I am Joseph. Out.